Shalom and welcome to the complete Aleph Tav. This will be the last lesson in this series and we have already discussed the many meanings for this combination of letters and their uses. And I just have a few more PS's to add to the lesson. As I was searching out the standalone Aleph Tavs, I found that out of the 613 of them that appear in the Westminster Leningrad Codex, over 200 of them were followed by another word, kol, kaflamid, which means all, every, or each. So the indication of the olive tav, which means from the beginning to the end, is a third of the time followed by this word, kol, which means everything. It's interesting because Kaflamid are the two middle letters of the Aleph Bet, just as the Aleph and the Tav are the beginning and ending letters. Kaflamid appear directly in the middle. There's another way in which the Aleph Tav point to the Kaflamid. First of all, because the beginning and the end uh, match the middle and the middle. And this is used by a cipher, a Hebrew cipher, which is called Atbash. And so it's a substitution code where the instead of Aleph, we write Tab. Instead of Bet, we write Shin all the way through the Aleph Bet. And so we see for that that the Kaf will be substituted for Lamed and the Lamed will be substituted for Kaf. There are actually two examples of this in uh, Atbash in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51.1, there's a phrase, Lev Kamai, and it is the substitution code for Kastim, which is the Chaldeans, which is a common term throughout Tanakh. So you can see that the Lam at the beginning is substituted for the Kaf of Kastim. The uh, Bet is substituted for the Sin, and so on. The other one that we see in Jeremiah is, is appears actually twice in Jeremiah, which is where it talks about Shishak, and it is Atbash for Babel. So the Shin is substituted for the Bet, and again we can see that the Kaf is substituted for the Lamed. Another cipher code which is used in Hebrew writing is Albam, and so if we divide the alphabet uh, completely in half, as we saw in the previous slide. The first 11 letters are substituted back and forth for the 12th through the 22nd letters. So Aleph is substituted for Lamed, Bet for Mem. And so if we get to the end of that series, we see that the Kaf will be substituted for the Tav. So again, the Aleph Tav relates to the Kaf Lamed. There's just one possible use of this. Uh, some people think it, that it is used, actually, Albam, in this phrase in Isaiah for Tava'el, that it is um, really an Albam substitution for Ramla. Some people say yes, some people say no. But if we're talking about everything, the all in all, from the Aleph to the Tav, then that's exactly what call means. It means everything, all in all. We see some scriptures that point to this in 1 Corinthians 15, 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all, that the Aleph Tav is call. It's everything. Colossians 3, 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Messiah, the Aleph Tav, is all and in all, call. The Aleph Tav, all in all, is call. It's everything. Another thing I began to think about is the Tav Aleph. Uh, just as Yeshua began as the Aleph and was incarnated as the Tav, we begin our lives as the Tav, as the last part of creation, the created man, and eventually we will take our place as a spiritual being with the Aleph. 
This word uh, means like a little chamber, and we're going to see it's mostly used in Ezekiel, but also in uh, one or two other places. 1 Kings 14.28 And it was so, when the king went into the house of Yahweh, that the guard bare him and brought them back into the guard chamber. So here it's translated as guard chamber, this tab aleph, ta. And in Ezekiel 40, uh, one place, verse 7, and every little chamber, every ta, was one reed long and one reed broad, and between the little chambers were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. There are six gates in the millennial temple, in Ezekiel's temple, from uh, three into the outer court and three into the inner court. And inside the gateway of each gate are six of these Ta, Ta'im, uh, little chambers uh, where the guards, I guess, stood. Now we know uh, many things about who we are as uh, spiritual beings. We're just going to look at some scriptures. In John 14, 2, Yeshua said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. In 1 Peter 2, 5, he says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yeshua the Messiah. Paul also taught in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And in 2 Corinthians 6:16, 6, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we can see that we are being built together as one house, that the house will have many rooms, possibly many little rooms like these rooms, but there's a little more insight we can gain. In Proverbs 23, 7, it's written in English in the King James, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to you, but his heart is not with you. This opening phrase uh, doesn't really reflect what's going on in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, it says, Ki kamosha ar benafsho ken hu. Ki is the for, because, kamo is like, and then sha'ar is not about thinking. Sha'ar is a gate. And then where is the gate? It is in his nefesh, in his soul. And it's certainly not within the parameters of this teaching to go into uh, the different parts of the human being. I've done an extensive teaching on that elsewhere. But the soul is the essence of who you are. And so rather than thinking in your heart, how are you is what's happening as the gatekeeper of your soul. What are you letting in and what are you letting out? And that is the truth of who you are. And so this is a very small picture touching on how we might be the guards of the temple. We have a little room. Maybe that little room is like our soul. And what do we let into our temple? What do we let out? That is uh, a function of the soul, to be the gatekeeper of the soul. And that is how you are. So I think the Tav Aleph can also relate in this teaching to the Aleph Tav. There's one more thing that I noticed while I was making all this study, and, and uh, I'm sure there might be other places, but there are two places where there is not a single Aleph Tav at all. In the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, and in the Song of Deborah in Judges 5, there is not one Aleph Tav direct object marker, not one width, not a single, either one that is attached to a a vav or a mem. There's none that are attached to personal pronouns or possessive pronouns. There is not a single one. I have no idea what this means, but maybe you might have an idea what it means. And if you do, I would be very happy to hear from you. 
to see what your thoughts are on that. Next time we will go on to a whole other topic. I hope that this study has been of some blessing to you and given you some insight into not only the essence of who Yeshua is, who the Father is, how creation works, how the wonderful language of Hebrew works. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom, shalom.